कैन भारत जोड़ो एन राहुल वोस द बिग फोकस ऑन फाइव लाइव It's the biggest ever political yatra by any political party in the history of India. The country's oldest political party, the Congress party, embarks starting 5 p.m. today with a huge rally in Kanyakumari, the southern tip of the peninsula, making its way across more than 3000 kilometers over 150 days. But is this really a Bharat Jodo yatra? What is there to Jodo? We are one country. We are a united nation. Is this really about relaunching Rahul Gandhi yet again to repackage him for 2024? That's the big story we're going to be tracking. Live rally from Kanya Kumari. Up in a minute. First, the headlines. Proposal to rename Rajpath Kartavya Path officially approved. India today accesses exclusive images of the revamped Central Vista Avenue in Delhi that will be inaugurated by the Prime Minister tomorrow. Non-stop misery for parts of Bengaluru as the Garden City drowns in some areas. More rains predicted. Bengaluru's tech hub submerged. 225 crore rupees in losses per day due to the floods in these areas. Aam Aadmi Party versus Delhi Lieutenant Governor Rao escalates. Aam Aadmi Party MP tears defamation notice sent by Governor. BJP accuses KCR's daughter Kavita of having links with the accused in Liquor Gate. Savarkar showdown reaches Tamil Nadu from Karnataka. Complaint registered against BMK Neta for posting video that shows Savarkar flying on a crow and meeting Lord Vishnu. BJP cries Hindu sentiments for first reaction from team Brahmastra after Ujjain beef backlash Ram Ranbir and Alia evade questions Ayan Mukherjee says he was upset by the Bajrang Dal protest It's the latest coming in from the big fight between the Aam Aadmi Party government in Delhi and the Delhi Lieutenant Governor. The Lieutenant Governor's big charge against Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal is the latest round that has been fired. Delhi's LG has asked Delhi's Chief Secretary to inquire into alleged evasion of stamp duty by Arvind Kejriwal's family members in the sale of properties. The allegation is that Kejriwal sold three plots for 4.54 crore rupees and showed a grossly undervalued price of just 72.72 lakhs on paper. It is also alleged that Kejriwal sold the properties through his wife Sunita Kejriwal at a market rate of 45,000 rupees per square yard, but showed the transaction at the rate of a meager 8,300 rupees. per square yard the lieutenant governor has received a copy of a complaint dated the 28th of august demanding an inquiry against kejriwal i want to go across to india today's amit bhardwaj uh, on this latest latest salvo that has been fired amit the delhi lieutenant governor seeking an inquiry against arvind kejriwal serious allegations here that's absolutely right uh, shiv you know and it comes from the day when Aam Aadmi Party was actually going ballistic on uh, LG Vijay Kumar Saxena, and earlier in the day, Vijay Kumar uh, there were allegations by Aam Aadmi Party MP Sanjay Singh that uh, when LG was uh, chairman of the KVIC, there were scams of paying cash payments to ghost employees of nearly 2.5 lakh, and that particular day. This is a big allegation coming from the LG office sources. As for the sources, a complaint counter copy has been marked to Delhi's chief secretary by Lieutenant Governor V K Saxena. You know, in the matter in the complaint which has been filed with Delhi uh, Lokayukta, in which allegations have been made out that stamp duty evasion was uh, carried out by Mr. Kejriwal and his family in sale deeds of three plots. Now, these three plots are uh, were were sold in Haryana. so this is basically uh, pertaining to the uh, birthplace of uh, uh, mr kejriwal and in most likelihood as per sources these are the land uh, sale deeds uh, 
uh, which uh, Mr. Kizdwal, uh, of Mr. Kizdwal's parental ancestral uh, land. And there are allegations that the property, uh, you know, worth in hmm. 4.5 CR, it was actually shown on papers that this was property of nearly 72 lakh rupees. So this is a big allegation, grave allegation, which has been uh, alleged in the complaint file with the Delhi Loka Yukta. Now, Delhi LG has forwarded that particular complaint to Delhi Chief Secretary and, ha and uh, has asked Delhi Chief Secretary to take necessary action on the complaint. So this is a mega big, showdown, mega yeah. political showdown unfolding in the national capital. Big, Back big showdown and it's only escalating. Kavi Shankar Kapoor, who is a, a spokesperson of the Delhi BJP with me on the phone line for a first reaction, Mr. Kapoor. Inquiry being asked for by the Lieutenant Governor of Delhi into, you know, stamp paper, stamp paper swindling. That's the allegation against Arvind Kejriwal. Your reactions? Slowly and steadily, the Qatar Imandar image of Arvind Kejriwal is getting dented. First it was excise scam, now this stamp duty scam. Nobody can even imagine that uh, in, in a city like Delhi, three plots can be bought in 72 lakhs. Surely it is a, a case of under-representation of the amount. And uh, our inquiry is must in it. Kavi Shankar Kapoor there of the BJP reacting first. We'll have to see if an inquiry is ordered by the Delhi Lieutenant Governor. It's the latest relaunch of Rahul Gandhi. There have been so many relaunches of Rahul Gandhi over the years. One has lost count. But here comes the latest, and it has been packaged as a Bharat Jodo Yatra. 150 days, 3,750 kilometers, 12 states, many union territories, starting from Kanyakumari and ending in Kashmir 150 days from now. It is being projected by the Congress party as an echo of the people's problems from GST to price rise to unemployment to the many other issues that are everyday ailments of the common Ahmadmi and Aam Mahila. But the BJP feels this is just yet another revival attempt of a collapsing Congress party and a party that faces total obliteration, this is perhaps the only way to hit the road and create some energy before hitting the road to 2024. Whatever you may call it, and whichever side of the political fence you sit on, the road to 2024 for the Congress begins right now at the southern tip of India's peninsula in Kanyakumari in Tamil Nadu, where Rahul Gandhi, in a very short moment from now, will be addressing a big rally, signaling the beginning of the glitzy Bharat Jodo Yatra. The Congress has begun this much-awaited, much-talked-about, much-advertised BJY, Bharat Jodo Yatra, led by Rahul Gandhi. In many ways, this could end with him being basically anointed the Congress president, the Yatra is to flag problems of economic disparities, social polarization, and political centralization across the country, according to the, uh, according to the Congress party. India Today's reporters, Mosmi Singh and Supriya Bhardwaj, are on the ground, and they've been reporting on how participants in the Bharat Jodo Yatra will be sleeping and eating on the road for the next 150 days. Rahul Gandhi took part in a prayer meeting earlier this morning. These are images from that prayer meeting early this morning at the Samadhi of his father, former Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi, in Sri Perambudur, where he was assassinated by an LTTE suicide bomber in 1991. That was the first ceremonial element of the Bharat Jodo Yatra before Rahul Gandhi kicks it off in just a few minutes from now. The Congress General Secretary in charge of communication, Jairam Ramesh, who is also going to be walking alongside Rahul Gandhi, said the Yatra is a transformational moment for Indian politics, and it is a decisive moment for the rejuvenation 
of the party. In an apparent dig at the government, Ramesh said, it will not be a yatra of speeches where announcements are made. He said Rahul Gandhi, accompanied by 118 leaders, will interact with various groups. How do you see this entire yatra actually panning out uh, with the uh, BJP alleging that this is actually a Bharat Todo yatra? No, no, absolutely not. This is a transformational movement for Indian politics. India is being torn apart because of economic inequality, price rise, unemployment, GST, concentration of economic power. India is being torn apart because of social polarization on religion, caste, language, food. And India is being torn apart because of political centralization, dangerous political centralization, removing the rights of states, everything being concentrated uh, in the prime minister's office, the misuse of constitutional bodies, investigative agencies. So the reason why we are starting the Bharat Jodo Yatra is because Bharat is being todoed on economic inequality, social polarization and political centralization. So that's the reason why this Bharat Jodo Yatra was promised in Udaipur by the Congress president on the 15th of May 2022. And today, this 3,570 kilometer long Padyatra, the longest Padyatra by any political party, by India's oldest political party, uh, is being launched. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is not a monkey bath yatra. It's a janta ki chinta yatra. What are the issues that people are concerned with, the day-to-day -day issues uh, that people, uh, you know, want... Uh, the Congress party and other political parties to agitate for, to protest, to raise in parliament. I want to go across to India today's Mosmi Singh joining us live from the rally venue. Mosmi has been reporting from Kanyakumari in the build up to this entire mega rally. Mosmi, what's happening around you? Has Rahul Gandhi arrived? When, does, when do things begin? Take us through what's going to happen. chants that are reverberating in the air and Rahul Gandhi has arrived on the stage. All the Congress workers have just got up. They were sitting patiently waiting for Rahul Gandhi to arrive at uh, this venue which is the rally venue or the uh, meeting venue as the Congress calls it because nothing political about this yatra is what the Congress is flaunting. This after he's visited Sri Parambadur in the morning and then at the Mandapam uh, to take over the Tiranga from the three chief ministers of Tamil Nadu, Rajasthan and Chhattisgarh. So Shiv, this is clearly a landmark historic yatra for the Congress because nothing like this has been seen in recent times. It is also an Agni Pariksha of sorts for Rahul Gandhi who's taken many Padyatras that have reaped no political dividends. You remember the Kisan Yatra, the Bhatra Parsol Yatra and many of them which were, which just faded into oblivion. So there you are, Rahul Gandhi is right in the middle on the stage. There, Congress leaders talking to him and this is perhaps uh, the moment when everybody is standing for the anthem that is a moment of solidarity that is being observed by the Congress uh, party. Here there are all Congress workers who have uh, gathered from all across um, and uh, they are from various states. Uh, ahead you can see that the Bharat Jodo Yatris, the Bharat Yatris are flanked right in front. They will be doing the yatra with Rahul Gandhi, almost 120 in number, who will be clocking 150 days and 3,500 kilometers. So here at this spot, just next to this uh, picturesque, absolutely enchanting uh, seaside, uh, Rahul Gandhi will take the Tiranga and move ahead about a kilometer today and then start clocking uh, the kilometers of the Yatra from tomorrow on at 7 a.m. So here the anthem. Song that's playing Mosmi at this point. As everybody stands in complete. That's the Tamil Nadu state song that's playing. Let's just listen to it for a moment. Right. 
trip. So you heard the Tamil yeah. Nadu State song that played out with uh, ending with a one day matram, and Rahul Gandhi perhaps uh, would be uh, uh, would be hoping that this padyatra actually uh, completes the mission. And here there is uh, you can hear the national song being played out one day matram. again chance of rahul gandhi again being uh, raised by congress workers this is a point uh, shiv i was telling you about how this is a litmus test for rahul gandhi to not only connect with uh, india but also the citizens but also with congress workers because everywhere where the yatra is passing through mm. uh, you know apart from rajasthan uh, the congress has been out of power so it is a herculean task that rahul gandhi has set out and he is calling it a tapasya of sort so that's the uh, a uh, bharat jodo yatra song that is being circulated on social media yes. on various uh, platforms of uh, the social media and would be uh, played out during the yatra as well over to you sir okay mosmi we're going to keep coming back to you obviously we're uh, you know are going to wait for rahul gandhi's speech uh, other big leaders obviously you know as is the custom uh, in such events will speak before rahul gandhi finally speaks because he is the a leader of this entire uh, enterprise the bharat jodo yatra it's being kicked off today the actual pad yatra will start tomorrow am i right mosmi today is just the inaugural event tomorrow is when the actual pad yatra starts yes shiv you're right today is the inaugural yatra just about 700 meters to a kilometer that they will take off but uh, from tomorrow morning the yatra that the congress is calling has never ever been done before the longest padyatra congress is flaunting will start at 7 am in the morning i just wanted to show you the visuals right behind pawan pawan this passage which is a very beautiful picturesque place all uh, packed with congress workers so uh, the question really is we've seen these numbers before in rallies of the gandhi family we seen these numbers in padyatras the question really is whether that will convert into any dividends or results for the congress party ship the true boss me uh, stay continue to stay with me as long as you are able i know there's a big crowd there uh, but you know boss me is our a uh, political reporter who's been in bigger crowds than these for sure but she will be uh, 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 she'll be a woman on the ground there getting us the very latest when rahul gandhi speaks as well i just want to show our viewers now the entire route that this yatra will be taking once rahul gandhi begins the march tomorrow let's show our viewers now let's show our viewers the path across 3750 kilometers 570 kilometers i beg your pardon that this yatra takes across uh, many states of the country and finally ending in uh, in in uh, shrinagar in jammu and kashmir notably himachal pradesh and gujarat are not being crossed through there the two pole bound states this year but the congress has clarified that there are separate yatras and separate campaignings uh, campaigns happening in both those states and the congress did not want to make this only about the elections but about people's issues so that's what the bharat jodo yatra looks like radhika khera of the congress party is with us tuhin sinha from the bjp joins us live as well radhika to you first first of all congratulations to you and the party on the 
inaugural and the beginning of the Bharat Jodo Yatra. It's taken its while to come to fruition. Now your leader is on stage. All of them are about to inaugurate the entire big thing. What's the mood in the Congress right now? Because, uh, uh, because Radhika, this is being seen as a Bharat Jodo Yatra, but I think most will agree that this is also being seen as a huge opportunity for the revival and the energization of the Congress party. So what's the mood in the party right now? See, uh, Shiv, uh, first of all, thank you. And uh, the mood of the party is that we, from the beginning, the Congress party has always been for the people. And we always are fighting for the rights of the people. And once again today, when the country needs us, when the country is being divided on various fronts, whether economic, whether social, caste, religion, on every front, the country is seeing a huge divide. That is the time that India needs to be brought back together. India needs to be united on the same platform. There has to that divide has to be uh, finished. Well, then only then can India progress. In the last eight years, we've seen where the country has gone, and the situation is extremely sad. However many ads you may be seeing, however much the Prime Minister will come out with his monkey bath, go on Lal Kila and come up with his uh, jingings, the fact is. The situation is extremely sad, whether it is the economic division in the country, whether it is people fighting. Like, what I would say is, bhai ko bhai se ladaya ja raha hai, dharam ko dharam se ladaya ja raha hai, aur jati ko jati se ladaya ja raha hai. So this is very important. Bharat ko jodna bahut bahut zaruri hai. And of course, this is the first longest, and this is the, hmm. no political party has ever done a yatra like this, a pad yatra, so hmm. long. Mm -hmm. Ever. So, which is why many feathers have been ruffled. Okay. And that is what we are seeing happening. Feathers ruffled in the BJP, says the Congress. Tuhin, how would you answer that? Because the BJP has been kind of scoffing at this entire yatra, saying that this is not a ideological yatra, this is just another exercise in relaunching Rahul Gandhi. How would you respond? How are you seeing this yatra, Tuhin? Well, good evening, Shiv. Shiv, uh, the Congress Party has a terrible track record when it comes to Bharat Joro. In the 1980s, they fomented trouble in Punjab and in Kashmir by indulging with the pro-separatist elements. And now, in the last few years, Rahul Gandhi has been vitiating the atmosphere by, by unnecessarily bad-mouthing Veer Savarkar and making it our freedom fighters versus your freedom fighters by, uh, you know, championing the cause of Tukre Tukre gang by, uh, you know, and all other ways. Today, he says there is hate in the country, but that hate is also fueled by him when he does not turn up in a place like Jharkhand, which is governed by his party. And, you know, I, I'm sure you, you are aware of the kind of uh, hate which is being fomented by certain sections of society in Jharkhand, but th that is inconvenient for the Congress party to talk about it or to talk about the crimes that are happening in Rajasthan. So this essentially is Rahul Gandhi's survival battle he knows that, you know, that finally there are voices in the Congress party hmm. which don't want him to continue as president. And this is his last attempt to retain that position. Okay. I, uh, Radhika, I know you want to answer that. I just want to list out some of the big questions that people are asking. Not just us, but in general, what's on people's minds on social media and elsewhere about this entire yatra. Because there are a few things that are beyond discussion. One, that the Congress is currently India's largest opposition party. We can all agree that the opposition is required for a good democracy. The Prime Minister also says it himself. These are the big questions on what is clearly the biggest ticket, the biggest high-profile event that the Congress has put together. Number one, will the Yatra, this is immediate, the Congress may not like this question, but number one, will the Yatra help the Congress in the Gujarat, Himachal and Karnataka polls, which are the immediate elections coming up. After all, what is a political party's job? But to win elections so they can serve the people. Number two, can this Yatra stop the big high-profile exits from the Congress party that have been bleeding the organization? Will this unite the Congress party around Rahul Gandhi? No more bickering, no more, you know, Manish Tiwari's and this one and that one saying this and that. Will this unite the Congress party around Rahul Gandhi as citizen number one? Will voters buy, very important, will voters buy yet another Rahul Gandhi relaunch? Because there have been so many relaunches. Will other opposition parties support this yatra? Very important because the Congress party has ongoing battles with the Trinamool, with the Ahmadmi party. Will 
any of those big opposition parties join hands in this yatra. Can Rahul Gandhi hope to be an opposition magnet before 2024? We are seeing what Nitish Kumar is doing in other parts of the country right now. Can Rahul Gandhi reclaim that space or even hope to reclaim that space? Will this yatra save the Congress party from total splintering is a question across the board that people are asking. Could this be the big event or the big signal moment for the Congress not to sort of collapse into further splintering and pieces? Radhika, the BJP says you can call it what you want, you can package it the way you want, but this is a survival mission for Rahul Gandhi. At the end of the day, Rahul Gandhi is not the party's president. He is only a member of parliament, but he is front and center in this whole thing. So for anybody looking at it from the outside, this is basically a coronation for Rahul Gandhi. Even though your party has internal elections, this seems like a fait accompli. Rahul Gandhi is citizen number one in the Congress party, and nobody should have any issues with that. And this is basically his survival attempt. How would you answer that, Radhika? First of all, Shiv, this is not one particular person's uh, padyatra. This is an organization event, an organization padyatra. Congress workers from across India, the real face of Congress, the real workers of Congress, everyone is taking part in this yatra. They will yeah. be walking alongside Rahul Gandhi ji. Secondly, there might be some people who might not be open to his leadership. Congress is a democratic party. No one thopos a president like the RSS will decide there will be no elections. They will have an Amit Shah Sahab or a Nitin Gadkari ji or the current uh, BJP president and they have to go ahead with whatever they get. The Congress party has elections, whether it was Sonia Gandhi ji, whether it was Rahul Gandhi ji, and the elections are fair and open. Anyone's allowed to contest and we put it all across in front of the media. Now, the Congress workers, leaders, a majority, I would say everyone wants Rahul Gandhi to come back as the Congress president and lead from the front. Now, that is totally Rahul Gandhi's decision, what he decides. Mm. Secondly, now, like the BJP said, what the BJP spokesperson was saying over here, he was talking about Jharkhand, he was talking about Rajasthan. Now, this is exactly what we need to expose. Now, whenever there is a Congress rule state or an opposition rule state, the BJP will come up with the dharam of the uh, uh, person, uh, if a girl has been raped, they will come out with the caste, they will come out with the dharam. But they forget, you know, Shiv, just... Ten days back, the Prime Minister, the Honourable Prime Minister of the country was in Kutch. He was there to, um, uh, they were, I think he was uh, open, inaugurating uh, some um, thing in Kutch which related to the earthquake victims. And just three kilometers from the venue, there was a Hindu-Muslim riot breaking out. There was a sex, Dhara, uh, there were sections yeah, yeah. Uh, imposed over there. People were not allowed to stand over there. Again, there was a Hindu-Muslim thing. Every second, third day, if you open the newspapers of Gujarat, I will talk about Gujarat because that is the state that has made Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji the Prime Minister of the country. Okay, Every okay. day, it says, a Hindu girl has been raped. By a, uh, a Hindu girl has been raped. But, okay. dekha but when it comes to Bilkis Bano, the Prime Minister will keep quiet from 15th August. This is very important. Why we talk about Bharat Jodo Yatra? When the okay. Prime Minister on 15th August from, in, from the... Uh, was talking from uh, the export and saying Ki, you have to talk about Mahila Saman. His government at the same time in Gujarat was leaving out the rapists and, and the murderers in the Bilkis Bano case. Okay, now, so you're saying... One most I... important... Yeah, yeah, complete your point, complete your point One, quickly. Yeah, just 30 seconds. Most important thing, this is the nafrat that we want to get out. You cannot identify people or give them justice on the basis of their religion and caste. You cannot decide that only one person will get all the advantages in the country, that a man who no one knew for eight years, now that Gautam Adani is the third richest man in the world. There has that divide has to finish. You okay. have to treat everybody with equality and that is exactly what this Bharat Joro Yatra is. The question now is whether this message is going to ring an electoral bell for the Congress party because you know we can sit here and debate till the cows come home about ideology and the lofty ideals and the philosophies of what's going on but at the end of the day the Congress party is going to be nothing if it doesn't start getting a message out to voters and actually winning the elections because uh, you know that, that that's what this game is really all about Tuhin, before I come to you and I know you want to answer that but before I come to you the BJP has attacked this as not a Bharat Jodo Yatra, but a Parivar Jodo Yatra, because there are posters that have come up which have Robert Vadra's face along with Rahul Gandhi and Priyanka and Sonia Gandhi. 
There have been other leaders which have attacked uh, the Congress party saying there is no need for Bharat Jodo unless you intend to go to Pakistan and bring Pakistan back and merge it with India. So all of these attacks have compounded on day one of the Bharat Jodo Yatra. Take a look at the politics and then we'll go back to the ground and to our guests. Take a look. Congress's 3,500 kilometer Bharat Jodo Yatra is witnessing raging politics. Priyanka Gandhi Vadra's husband and businessman Robert Vadra sparking a big row after featuring in the Congress Yatra posters. The poster sparked speculations about Vadra's possible entry into Congress amid series of exodus. The BJP slammed the Congress, calling Rahul's Yatra as a Parivar Jodo initiative aimed at rehabilitating the Nehru Gandhi family. This is not about Bharat Jodo. This is about Parivar Ko Jodo. This is about Bhrashtacharyon Ko Jodo. From north to south, east to west, Rahul Ko Nitritva Se Jodo. While Congress termed the Yatra a transformational moment for Indian politics, BJP MP Ravi Shankar Prasad, in a scathing attack, called it a drama. The Natak hai, ye jo chalava hai, ye jo dikhava hai, isko desh ke aage batana zaruri hai. Ki ye parivar ko bachane ki yatra hai. Ye parivar ka party par niyantran bana rahe, uske liye yatra hai. This is not a man ki baat yatra. It's a janta ki chinta yatra. What are the issues that people are concerned with, the day-to-day -day issues uh, that people, uh, you know, want uh, uh, the Congress party and other political parties to agitate for, to protest, to raise in parliament and outside. Assam Chief Minister Himanta Biswa Sarma slammed the Congress for dividing the country in 1947 and advised Rahul Gandhi to carry on his yatra in Pakistan. कांग्रेस का समय में तो भारत दो टुकड़ा हो ही गया था अबे भारत जोड़ने के लिए तो कांग्रेस को पाकिस्तान जाना है हेमंता विश्व शर्मा आजकल जहर उगलने का काम कर रहे हैं भारतीय जनता पार्टी के लोग कहते हैं कि सारे मुसलमान को पाकिस्तान दे दो और पाकिस्तान को अखंड भारत में मिला लो यदि मिलाएंगे आज मान लो 20 करोड़ मुसलमान है तो बांग्लादेश पाकिस्तान अफगानिस्तान मिलाने के बाद तो 30 करोड़ हो जाएगा Congress leaders also made a fresh clamor for installing Rahul Gandhi as the party chief, despite the upcoming internal polls. हम कहते हैं कि वो अध्यक्ष बनते हैं। हम सब लोग मिलके राजनीति में कार्यकर्ता जो है कांग्रेस के सब मिलके हम लोग को कमी नहीं आने देंगे और उनके नेतृत्व में कांग्रेस मजबूत होगी, आगे बढ़ेगी और चुनौतियां जितनी भी हैं। each and every Congress worker across the nation, they are vociferously, vociferously demanding the leader of our party, Rahul Gandhi ji, to take the charge of Congress party and you. So can this yatra help the Congress in upcoming state elections and stop the exodus of loyalists? Or will it be just another bid to relaunch Rahul's lackluster political career? With Supriya Bharadwaj and Mausami Singh in Kanyakumari, Bureau Report, India Today. Now, what is this Yatra actually going to decide and achieve for the Congress party? Very, very important because a lot of money, a lot of planning, a lot of logistics has been put into this and there's not much time left before the 2024 elections. The last two elections, the Congress has been decimated. Number one, if the Congress can course correct is one of the biggest questions because it's been lurching from one disaster to the next electorally and organizationally can it stem that? Can the Congress regain credibility before the voter for the 2024 election? Can Rahul Gandhi's leadership, which has been rejected twice before, find acceptability both within his party? The Congress says everyone wants Rahul Gandhi to return as president, but can that leadership find takers within the voter, the electorate? The Congress's big problems are many at this point of time. And that's one of the reasons why in a democracy, it's good that the Congress has a focal point in the form of a Bharat Jodo Yatra. Number one, 
diminishing value of brand Gandhi. It's been diminishing and depleting for years now. There is a leadership vacuum at the top because you've got an interim president, you've got Rahul Gandhi, who's the de facto boss, but no one knows who to go to, and there is therefore this huge ongoing exit of prominent faces for the last few years, and that doesn't seem to stop. Many more are expected to leave very soon. There are weakened state units. The organization at the grassroots level is practically non-existent. There are allies encroaching on the Congress's turf, including the Ahmadmi Party and the Trinamool Congress, most notably. And there is disillusionment, disillusionment among the cadres. And therefore, all of these problems are hoped to be solved by this big 150-day exercise that the Congress hopes will become a signal moment, a kind of rallying point for galvanizing cadres and truly announcing and signaling a new rebirth for the Congress party. Mosmi is on the ground. Radhika and Tuhin continue to be with me. But Mosmi, since you track the Congress you know, so closely, you've been eyeball to eyeball with all of these issues over the many years. What is Siv Padayatra is going to be the big turning point, tipping point for the Congress party, where the Congress party basically says, you know, the, 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 the misery of the last eight years is something we want to say goodbye to. Now it's going to be a naya din for us. Sonia Gandhi, we are all here to pray for her. Speech. Absolutely, you know, a debacle of and two Lok Sabha elections and dozens of assembly elections is what the Congress party would like to leave behind. Hmm. Uh, but the Congress scenes unfolding the on the ground, I will ask Pawan uh, to pan and show us the scenes, uh, even as we deliberate and discuss how the Congress would like to position itself in this yatra. And you can see that my, uh, the, the man on the stage who is addressing the gathering is Digvijay Singh, who is the convener of this yatra, and apparently the man uh, behind the entire strategy of the Bharat Jodo Yatra. Now, he is an eternal Yatri himself, Dandan Narmada Yatra. And we are told that this is no man ki baad, this is a Bharat, uh, a Bharat ki baad that the Congress party will be doing. So that means Rahul Gandhi will not be launching any attacks on Prime Minister Narendra Modi. He will not be ranting or addressing the gathering and doing political sabhas. He would be only listening. The eyes and ears of the Congress party as the Congress claims. Uh, yeah. will be uh, for the uh, common people. So the first half will be an interactive yatra in the morning and the second half will be second half will be mass mobilization is uh, what we are told. Now we will have to wait and see the stretches that the Congress is going, whether how does that culminate on the ground ship because we are looking at a gathering of about 25,000 people a day who would walk with the Padyatris. Absolutely. It's incredible and Mosmi is going to be part of that yatra you know, for the first uh, for the first phase, at least, to give us a sense of what it's really like to embark on such a big political yatra as we cover the attention being paid to the Congress and its big message. Radhika Khera, the Congress, Tuheen Sinha, the BJP, continue to be with me. Uh, Radhika, you know, the, 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 the message going out about, uh, you know, the problems of the Aam Aadmi and Aam Mahila every day is obviously going to resonate. This is a big yatra. Obviously, there are going to be rallies and speeches and, uh, you know, things like that on a daily basis. And the Congress is a large party, so there will be that surround sound. But at the end of the day, as an organization, as the country's oldest political party, what are you hoping the end result of this yatra will be for the Congress party? It has to be a revival, isn't it, Priya Radhika? See, uh... In a democracy, there are times when a certain political party is in power and a certain political party is not. People, and this is actually the beauty of a democracy, people should get to witness different type of ideologies so they exactly know what is good for the country and what is not good for the country. But like I said earlier, like we have again and again been saying, the main aim of this yatra is to bring to, you know, to remove hatred that is being spread in the society. And you've seen Rahulji tweeted also after uh, paying his homage to his father. Yeah. And uh, it, his words that he used, that he wants to finish the hatred that is being spread in the country. And when it, when you, uh, earlier I missed out uh, to tell you this, we were talking about the upcoming Gujarat elections. Well, by the time the Yatra re reaches Gujarat, the elections will be done and over with. Hmm. It is not related to elections. It is, again, like I said, um, you have to fight for the country because this is the country for which our, um, our uh, 
ancestors have fought for. Shiv, your ancestors, my ancestors, they've all fought to get us freedom so that we can sit on national television and talk like this and that we are not North Korea or another country or we are not like but China. We, are not we cannot Korea. voice our opinions. You know, the, there are many people exactly. who have a problem with this why. Bharat Jodo this is idea. What we fought the for. country is united. Where is the country not united is one is you know, is one argument that a lot of people have. I'll come back to that point in just a moment because to him the, the one of the one of the angles of attack that the BJP has mounted on this is that this is a Parivar Jodo Yatra, which is a familiar form of attack. You know, you've had posters of uh, Robert Vadra cropping up at this Bharat Jodo Yatra as well. So is that what you're saying that this is about family? rebranding the family at a time when their, uh, you know, their kind of influence and uh, uh, reach has gone down dramatically in the last few years? Well, yes, absolutely. Shiv, let's face it, the underlying objective of this Yatra is to usher in the Vatra Congress. If this Yatra is successful and, and Rahul Gandhi manages to, you know, win un unopposed, mark my words, he will usher in the next you know, next group of uh, Gandhis into the Congress, which would include uh, Robert Vadra and possibly their children. And secondly, the most important point over here is that, like you had mentioned, where is the need for Bharat Joro? Because Bharat has never been as united as it has been in the last eight years. And when I say united, I'm also talking about financial inclusion and unity. What was the legacy of the Congress government? 18,000 villages not having electricity, 30 per, uh, you know, sanitation cover, just 40 percent, 30 crore people not having bank accounts. We have unified the society. Secondly, these are the people who had opposed uh, the, the application of Article 370, which was an, a big impediment in the last 70 years in unifying uh, Kashmir with India. We have managed it successfully. Okay. We have managed yeah. Bharat Jodo through a three-day exercise of uh, Har Ghar Tiranga. Way back in 1992, we achieved that through an Ekta Yatra when the then, when, uh, you know, Modi ji then traveled to Kashmir, risking his life at a time when, you know, you, it, it was, re, in fact, very dangerous to host uh, the Indian flag over there. But he managed to do that on 26 Jan 1992. So where is the need for Bharat Jodo at this point of time? It's a, it's a vacuous gimmick, which will only at the end of the day benefit the family, if at all. Okay, okay. Radhika, you know, the point also, you know, the, 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 all the points that you made, uh, you know, are, are uh, you know, the, 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 they're, they're fairly taken. Because as a political party, as a, as a, as in, in a democratic system, as an opposition party, it is relevant and important to, to highlight the issues of people as you see relevant. And, uh, you know, we can debate about it and talk about it. But I still think that you're avoiding the question that I'm asking, Radhika, which is that at the end of the day, this has to be about elections. One cannot sidestep the idea that elections are coming. And if the Congress party wants to make real change, it wants to do the things that it is highlighting in this Bharat Jodo Yatra, then this entire Yatra has to mean a revival of the Congress party, Radhika. It can't be that, you know, this is not about elections. We don't worry about elections. Power is poison. We are fighting an ideological fight, which is usually what Rahul Gandhi talks about, saying that this is a long game. At the end of the day, if this is supposed to mean something, especially to the people who support the Congress party, this has to be about elections. You know, Shiv, when I started uh, this debate, I talked about ruffling feathers and the way Tuhin uh, spoke about certain things. That I'm, like I said, I proved my point that we have ruffled a lot of feathers. They removed uh, 370 in Jammu and Kashmir, but Tuhinji, you forgot to tell the viewers that over 110 days, Kashmiri pundits have been sitting on strike, requesting, begging the government to come and protect them, give them some other jobs, remove, move them from Jammu and Kashmir because they are being killed again and again. Is this what you removed the article for? Shameless. Second thing, uh, I'm not going to start counting all the misdeeds of the government. He talked about economic equality. Sir, you remove corporate tax. Remember how much you got it down from 30% from to where it is now? Who is benefiting? Like I said, people like Mr. Adani and our... So, Shiv, what do we pay taxes for? Today, we pay taxes so that later on, when we retire, we can live a comfortable life. That is the responsibility of our government. Okay. And when uh, people who are senior citizens, they get compensation and they get some, uh, um, some uh, rupees off on their train travel tickets, that has been taken away by 
as a senior citizen should government not be helping our senior citizens when we are earning today and giving the government uh, okay. our taxes what is happening then so these are little little things they may seem very little to us because maybe today we are earning a lot but talk about the common man you have okay. people who are not able to afford basic dal roti chawal i think now okay. cng is much more expensive than petrol and diesel and now I think... when it comes to bhat yeah no no i yeah. you, you you can uh, your point is well taken and all of the points you say i there, there is no dispute with many of the things you say obviously the bjp will react to them but i i will end on this note because i'm out of time on this by simply saying that it is one thing to say that these are issues of the common person it's another to believe that this is going to be something that is detached from an electoral plan the congress needs to have a plan whether it is relaunching rahul whether it is rahul bachao whether it is congress jodo all of those things will have to be part of the plan the congress cannot ignore the fact that there is a real existential crisis and if it wants the bharat jodo yatra to be successful it needs to be realistic about what the end game is really going to be it is beginning now good for democracy it's good to see opposition parties showing finally some big national energy let's see where it goes for the congress party tuhin and radhika pleasure thank you very much for being with me that rally is still live rahul gandhi will be speaking in just a few minutes from now we'll have that whole speech for you live here on india today but coming up next the first reaction from the crew of brahmastra the upcoming film that is already trending as boycott brahmastra for some reason well now after the ujjain beef backlash we'll tell you about how alia and ranbir and ayan mukherji have reacted that's next किसी ज्ञानी व्यक्ति ने कहा था कि दुनिया में सबसे जरूरी चीज पैसा नहीं है प्यार है और मैं पैसों से प्यार करता हूं <laughs> <laughs> एक बार एक किसान ना आराम कर रहा था बगिया में खटिया जैसे झलिया वाली हाँ, टांग के मचान हाँ, बनाए हाँ, आराम हाँ। कर रहा था तो उसको किसी ने कहा कि यार तुम ये कर रहे हो कुछ उठो खेती करो मेहनत करो बोले क्या होगा उससे बोले अरे तुम्हारी फसल अच्छी होगी और तुम्हारे पास पैसा आएगा बोले फिर उससे क्या होगा बोले अरे तुम झोपड़ी में ये तुम्हारा छोटा घर है घर बड़ा हो जाएगा बोले फिर बोले फिर ए सी वेसी लगा लेना नौकर चाकर हो जाएंगे नौकर चाकर हो जाएंगे बोले क्या होगा उससे बोले उससे तुम्हें आराम हो जाएगा बोले मैं अभी क्या कर रहा हूँ <laughs>
वर्ल्ड हेल्थ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ओनली वेरी रिसेंटली साइटेड अ रिपोर्ट टू टॉक अबाउट द फैक्ट दैट ओवर 144 मिलियन पीपल कुड बी अफेक्टेड बाय लॉन्ग कोविड इन फैक्ट देयर इज इनफ एनिक्डोटल एविडेंस ओवर द लास्ट ऑलमोस्ट 3 इयर्स and also several data that seems to be suggesting that long after recovery there are signs and symptoms and problems associated with covid-19 and that in short is long covid long covid is a serious medical condition in december 2021 the world health organization had identified long covid as post covid-19 condition comprising a constellation of long term symptoms that some people experience after they have had covid-19 and had named the one suffering from it as long haulers now doctors at delhi's premier most all india institute of medical sciences has spoken particularly about three kinds of symptoms that are associated with long covid this is primarily a brain attack or stroke in arteries post covid doctors say there can be development of complications in the brain the remedy to acute situations like brain attack or stroke in arteries veins or brain inflammation however doctors have said that research is under way to understand this better so we are very clear that covid even though mild may affect people for a longer duration over up to a year and create increased incidence of heart attack strokes we know that covid itself in the acute phases causes increased incidence of strokes related to clotting related to inflammation of the arteries also increased incidence of clots in the brain causing strokes and clots in the lungs but we are concerned about the long term effects also doctors say that there has been an increase in brain and heart related issues during the second wave of the pandemic in the current scenario more data is required as what they say in fact according to dr ashok said chairman of the fortis scots heart institute a study found says there is an increase of 60% of the incidence of heart related issues and neurological disorders the way forward is never to ignore any of the symptoms that have cropped up and also consult a doctor immediately long covid is associated with any kind of covid infection even though the infection per se would be mild there is nothing that's going to really rule long covid out this means and we've got breaking news coming in first reaction from team brahmastra on the ujjain beef backlash controversy ranbir and alia at the brahmastra promotional event today were asked about yesterday's protest in ujjain in madhya pradesh here's how they reacted first reaction on the controversy हर फिल्म अपने साथ कुछ विवाद लेके आती है सबसे पहले आपको शुभकामनाएं आपको उसकी बहुत जरूरत पड़ेगी इस फिल्म के लिए आप मध्य प्रदेश गए थे आपने वहां अपने खिलाफ प्रदर्शन देखा आपको पता है देश में कई सारे संगठन आपके खिलाफ इसलिए खड़े हैं क्योंकि उनको लगता है आपने उनकी भावनाएं आहत की है दो सवाल आप जवाब दीजिएगा दोनों लोग रणवीर आलिया क्या वाकई में बॉलीवुड के सितारे जो बयान देते हैं कई बार वो ये ध्यान नहीं रखते कि उससे भावनाएं आहत होती है दूसरा जिन लोगों ने आपके खिलाफ बाइकआउट कॉल दिया है वो आपकी फिल्म क्यों देखे आशुतोष जी आई हैव टू रिक्वेस्ट यू दैट ये सवाल का जवाब आई वांट टू टेक इट ओके एंड आई वांट टू टेक इट बिकॉज टुडे वी आर टू टॉक अबाउट ब्रह्मास्त्र दिस पर्टिकुलर फिल्म एंड एज द फिल्म मेकर द क्रिएटर ऑफ द फिल्म आई फील इट्स इंपॉर्टेंट वी कीप आर कॉन्वर्सेशन अबाउट ब्रह्मास्त्र Madhya Pradesh me I'll just tell you thing I was feeling really bad that honestly Ranveer and Alia did not come with me for darshan to Mahakaleshwar temple uh, aapko thodi history mein batata hu uski uh, I had gone to Mahakaleshwar before uh, my motion poster release actually that time also I was coming to Delhi and uh, I had told myself that before the release of the film I will definitely go again and both of them were very keen to come with me and honestly till the end they were very keen that they will come but when we reached there and we heard about this i felt a little bit that let me go alone um it is um eventually i had gone to seek blessings and energy for the film and that blessing is for everybody um and i just didn't want to take alia there you know uh, in like in her current condition as well so i went alone though i felt very bad and honestly when i went i did feel that they could have also come and gotten their darshan so that is on me overall about everything else ashutosh ji you know my feeling is that uh, 
विद ब्रह्मास्त्र वी हैव दिस लाइन जो फिल्म पे लिखी हुई है द लाइट इज कमिंग एंड बाय लाइट इन द फिल्म वी मीन एवरीथिंग दैट इज पॉजिटिव एंड स्पिरिचुअल इन दिस लाइफ एंड with this whole marketing effort with this film my thing is that we must only spread warmth and positivity because that is what we all want and that is what the whole world needs and i truly think that we've worked so hard on the film aur is film mein itna celebration hai indian culture ka itna deeply and naturally that i know the film is releasing in two days i feel that every single person is going to feel that positivity so i want to keep this really positive and just say that that this film stands for positivity and that positive energy of the film will touch people well very tellingly both ranbir and alia were not allowed to answer that particular question from india today's ashutosh well that's how controversy and the boycott season over bollywood has made stars go a little silent and a little wary before their next big releases that's a wrap on five live coming up next akshita on 6 pm prime 72 hours and counting and the bengaluru crisis continues no respite for many flood ravaged areas of india's silicon valley it's actually worse in some places akshita does a deep dive on the other side